Today we're going to do a recap lesson on creating the drawings for honestly just about anything, but specifically we're going to be talking about the C-clamp. We're also going to be talking about uh, what's called the section view today um, to be able to produce our drawings. Okay, so in the end, our drawings, we're going to have a cover sheet, we're going to have a drawing for the clamp body, we're going to have a drawing for the clamp screw, and we're going to have a drawing for the uh, clamp cap that's going to include, again, what's called a section view. Okay, so we're going to talk about all that. Um, I'm just going to start this from scratch, and uh, we'll, we'll walk through like a couple things here. Okay, so the first thing that we need to decide is do we want a ANSI A inch or a portrait? Okay, again, portraits are the tall types of sheets. Um, if you have objects that are taller than wide, then a portrait is typically good. For the most part, we want to avoid the part portrait unless that's specifically what we're looking for. So we're going to select the NCA inch. We're going to say OK. Um, you can also always kind of tell based upon my drawings. Like if my drawings are portrait, then yours should be portrait. If mine are landscape, then yours should be landscape, right? This is a landscape drawing. So. Um, it says like, okay, what do you want to insert, right? And again, for my cover sheet, I always want to insert an assembly. So I need to make sure not to click on the part studio, but to click on the assemblies. I'm going to select my assembly. Okay, now I don't want my view scale to be one to three. I want my view scale ideally to always be one to one. Um, I don't want it to be a front orientation. I want it to be an isometric orientation. Uh, and then I'm going to drop this in my sheet. So this needs to be shaded, so I'm going to right click on this and say show shaded view. And remember again, in order to get your bill of materials list, you actually need to go into your assembly, select your bill of materials table, and you need to fill in this information here. And if you're doing that right now and you go back to your drawing, make sure you hit the update button to reflect those changes, Okay, which is up here. So we're going to grab the bill of materials table. Not just any table, sorry, but the bill of materials table. And it says we're going to slap down the top right corner. And then we have all of that, right? So we need at this point uh, our part balloons. We need a part balloon for the screw. We need a part balloon for the cap. And we need a part balloon for the Please do not like keep all your part balloons within your border. Everything should be within your border. It's time to add a title. So I really prefer to try and grab this middle one. It doesn't really matter that much, but I'm going to just call this the C clamp. My scale is one to one, which matches up here. So you don't need a second like scale document up here. So I'm pretty good. So. Again, we want all of our things to be in the same sheet set, and like 90% of you are doing a great job with that. 10% of you can't quite figure out how to do that. So again, sheet set stuff is over here in this tab here. So we're going to open that up, and we're going to click in the top right corner. We're going to say Insert Sheet. Okay. So at this point here, we need to insert not an assembly, but a part studio. And I'm going to start with the body of my object. Okay. So I'm going to select the body. Again, I really don't want my scale to be one to one or one to three. I want it to be one to one. If you change this now, it will affect your scale in your drawing itself. Okay, so like change it now, get your view right. If front view isn't actually a front view, then you know you can change like what view you want to display to begin with. But I'm going to start with my front view. Okay, I'm going to select my front view and I'm going to drop that in place. Notice now my scale is one to one because that's the scale that I started with. If I change it after the fact, then I need to change the scale after the fact. So I need an isometric in the top right. I also need to go back to my front view and I can project my top. And for this one, because I have details over here for the hole, I really want to project my left side instead of my right side. See my right side here, you know, I don't see a lot of detail here because it's showing me this part here. I really want to see the circle. So if yours is like backwards, if like your front view is backwards and like the tapers over here and the holes over here, then project a right view. But 
do project, project whatever one has the, the view on it. Okay, and we're going to move these things around so that they, um, you know, are within the border. I am going to change the scale of this. Junior High School students, it is now time for phase one of dismissal. Phase one of dismissal. And I'm going to set it, not like that, but right click to be a shaded view. So all of these views down here, I'm just going to highlight them, right click and say show hidden lines. You could also do that individually on each one. You could just right click and say show hidden lines. But that brings my hidden lines in. Okay, so one of the first things that I like to do in my drawings whenever I have a circle, which I have a circle here, is put in my center marks and my center point uh, lines. So center marks are here. Center marks again go in the center of a hole. So in that case, while center lines go in the center of a cylinder and they should be shown um, in your hidden lines. There and there, there and there. Okay, so that takes care of my center mark, center lines, all that type of stuff. So, new information here, how to show your uh, thread information. Okay, so up along the top here, there's a couple different like bits of information that we can use. There's like a um, hole call out, which is one of them. All right, and that's what we're going to use for this. So the hole call out will take a hole. It's going to automatically define the diameter of the hole and the type of thread that it's using. We really want to specify the circle, not the hidden lines. Okay, so that gives us the the hole information, which is pretty important to us. Um, and now honestly we can just start going through and dimensioning. Oh, some center marks that I forgot. We need center marks at the center of our fillets. Almost forgot that. So, now I can start going through and dimension. So here's the dimension of my overall length. Here's the dimension of my overall height. And let's say here is a dimension of my overall depth. Technically, I probably don't even need my top view, honestly. But, but those are my overall dimensions. And again, overall dimensions are always kind of going to be to the outside because they're always the biggest dimensions. So inside of that and keeping my dimension centered, I'm going to drop a dimension there. I'm going to drop a dimension here. And I'm going to put a dimension here. Okay, and this really helps to define things between all of these points. Now, notice my 250 crosses over these lines here. So I need to edit that. So a couple things. Again, this uh, drawing is done in um, numbers, decimals, not fractions. So we don't need to change to fractional inches. But we can change some of our stuff. So again, if we wanted to change to inches fractional, we could select this option and it would change all of our inches at once. But for this drawing, we're keeping it with uh, just inches and decimal inches, okay? One thing though that I would recommend is that the text for this is honestly kind of big at 0.12 inches each. I might suggest changing it to be 0 0.09. It will just make things fit a little bit better but not always. Now we can see that the 250 is in fact in between the lines. You still might want to move it out because it's still kind of crowded. You know, so I can like move that dimension out to here instead. Um, and that fixes that problem completely. But that, that kind of cleans that up there. Right now I also need to know the dimension between here and here. So I'm going to select that. I don't need to know between here and here because I can do the math to figure that out. Okay, now as far as like our radiuses are concerned, we're going to dimension those. And these. And for this radius, I'm going to double click and I'm going to say times two. And I want to show you a difference between two things. If I say times two here, it edits my dimension and it puts this underline in there. Okay, we don't want that. So get rid of that times two from there and instead put it in this box to the right times two and actually I'm going to put a space before it. Okay, that adds a note when you add to like this box here, it adds a note to the to the right. I could also like type things down here and it would add notes below it. 
right? So you can add your note here. It doesn't put in that um, underline. And now we know that this radius of 0.25 is for two different radiuses, which references this radius here and this radius here. Um, despite the fact that this is in the middle kind of of my object, it's not on top of my object. Like it's not down here. It's not over here. It's not like over here. I have it like in the middle of this white space, which is perfectly acceptable, but like it should be in the white space. Okay. Now we also need to dimension to where like the hole is, but we do not want to dimension to hidden lines ever. Okay. So in order to figure out where this hole is, we need to know how far it is from the right to the left, which is 0.375. We also need to know how far it is from the bottom to the top here. So that is from the top to the center there, which is 0.375. So let's think here. What else do we need in this drawing? I have all of my center points in here, my center lines in here. Everything looks pretty good. Um, I've got all of my dimensions. I can figure out the position of different things based upon my dimensions. So I think I'm pretty good. Um, I do need to change this, and I'm going to name this C clamp. Um, body. This is the body. Check. Okay. Done. So we're going to now create a new sheet. And we're going to place, in this case, insert our screw. Okay. So again, scale not 1 to 3, but 1 to 1. Um, here, I think we really need, because again, we don't want to dimension to hidden lines. So like, as I go to project my side view here, and again, my projection tool is still selected. So now I can go back to the front, I can select that, and I can drop this over here. Um, yeah, we don't want to dimension to, to hidden lines. So we actually, for this, are going to need a few different views because there's like lots of different information on different sides of this, this piece. Um, so I'm going to dimension not only the front or project the front, the top, the left and the right for this piece. Okay. Because when I go to turn on hidden lines, which I don't want a hidden line on that. So I'm just going to select these four, show hidden lines. Oops. There's really not that many hidden lines, which I guess I keep forgetting. So I'm going to drop, and again, I'm going to arrange my views before I really start putting dimensions on. I just kind of like to get this stuff set up. Um, make sure that all my views are inside. Make sure that like I have my shaded views on for what I need my shaded views on. And again, the first thing that I kind of start working on is center points and center marks. And for this drawing, there are a lot of them. Every circle gets a center point, right? So this circle gets a center point. Oops, that's not the right tool. Center point, center mark right there, okay? Um, this circle down here gets a center mark. This circle up here gets a center mark. And then we start working on the center lines, which again, there's lots of them, okay? So cylinders get center lines, like that cylinder gets a center line, that cylinder gets a center line, this cylinder gets a center line. I'm going to extend that here in a second. These two get them. Computer's running slow. This and this gets one. This and this gets one. And then this and this gets one. And again, these two lines are too short. So I'm going to get out of that tool. I hit escape. And now I can just select that line and I can drag it. Remember, a central line is going to go a little beyond your object. So I'm going to drag this out beyond my object there. Do the same thing down at this end here. And of course, I'm going to do the same thing at the top. 
Okay, so there are all my center lines, all my views, all that type of stuff. So again, we cannot dimension to hidden line. So like, we can't dimension to a lot of the stuff back here. So when we go into dimension here, I'm going to have a dimension here. I'm going to have a dimension for the bigger circle, and I'm going to have a dimension for the biggest circle. Now, the biggest circle could be dimensioned here, but we're not going to. You know, actually, in second thought, I guess I don't really need this view. Yeah, I don't need this view. So I, I'll, I'll just get rid of that and reorganize. Um, so I have the diameter now of this circle here. Do not put a dimension like this in here, please, okay? Because dimensioning to like the square part of a cylinder, like when we look at it in a square versus dimensioning the diameter here, the diameter here is correct. This is, is bad dimensioning practice, okay? So you don't want to do that. You only want to put linear dimensions on linear objects. Well, this is a circular dimension, so we want to make sure that we're including um, a diameter symbol when it's greater than 180 degrees or a radius symbol when it's equal to 180 or less. Okay, so we put that in there. Um, and now we're really ready to start like dimensioning the length of our object. So starting at the very end, I'm gonna select that point there. I'm going to go to the center of this circle. I'm gonna drop that dimension in there, okay? Um, so again, from the center of that cylinder to, well, no, let's start. I'm just gonna start back from the beginning and do some baseline dimensioning. So from here to here, that's equal to 0 0.562. From here to here, it's equal to 3.594. Then from here to here, it's equal to 3.875. Okay, now I can do the same thing for my height of this cylinder, right? So from here to my center line is one inch in that direction and then from my center line down to here again is oh not to there from here to the end of my object not the end of my center line there is, is one inch right and why did i select this center line and not the end of that this one bisects the center of my object this one is bisecting the center of my object in this direction not vertically so I've selected the end point here and I selected the midpoint basically of the cylinder in this direction to dimension to. The only other dimension that I need in this, well two things I guess, is a thread information and I need the diameter of the circle up here. Again, I'm not going to dimension that down here, I'm going to dimension that up here. So the last thing here is I need some thread information, okay? And they don't have like a whole call out for threads, like I can't select that there. So we're gonna do our call out. We're actually gonna select the same thing that we typically do with uh, like our, our balloons, all right? And when you open this thing up, it's gonna start off being like a circle and it's gonna start off being item number, right? And if I were to drop this down here, it would give me my item number. Um, so, that's not what I want it to do. So I'm just gonna delete that. We're gonna go back to the call out and we're gonna edit some stuff, all right? So instead of it doing our table number, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna put in our thread information, which is 3 16 18. Then underneath of the circle option, we don't want any sort of shapes. We're just gonna say none, okay? Now we have this, oh, and I forgot, I'm sorry. 3 16 UNC, Unified Course Thread. Okay, so now we can select an object, like the edge of that screw, and we can drop our note in, and now we have a custom note made for, for that thread type. All right, so again, this is going to be C-clamp um, screw. So last drawing now, uh, this is going to be our C-clamp cap. Okay. So for the cap, 
we're going to use uh, what's called the section view. All right, so let's just take a quick peek at what section view. Okay, so what is a section view? So a section view is where we put some sort of a cutting plane in the middle of an object, and then we basically remove everything that's in front of that. Okay, and we've actually been using section planes in uh, our drawings. And when we're creating models to be able to see like different levels within our drawing, but we're going to, uh, or within our model, we're going to add that to our drawing. When we see section views, we get these lines that run across through anything that was actually cut. Okay. And those are called section lines. Okay. And this is, um, how the material was cut away where we have like gaps where things were not cut away. And there are like these open air spots. They just are white okay and if we were to have multiple different materials in a section we would change the way that the section lines look as well as like the direction of the uh, section lines to denote different materials within those pieces okay so uh, a couple rules the section line area is always going to be completely bound by a visible like outline right so we're always going to see these um, object lines around the perimeter of our cuts. Uh, section line areas should always be parallel. So when we create our section lines, they should be parallel with one another. We don't have to worry about that as we're working in CAD. Um, all visible edges behind the cutting plane should be shown. That's like things like these areas down here where we see the edges, but we don't see it being cut through. And then lastly, hidden features should be omitted in areas of a section view. Okay, exceptions include threads and a broken out section. Okay, so for the most part, we're not going to have hidden lines in a section view. So we really want to show the inside of this cap detail. So that's what our section view is going to be. We're going to need a couple different views. So we're going to bring in, and let's see here, not our assembly. We're going to bring in the cap. Okay, and I definitely want my cap to be at least one to one. I might even want it to be like two to one. Let's kind of see what that looks like. Yeah, let's try changing this to like a two to one and we'll see how that goes for. I think that that'll be good. We're gonna drop that view down first. Okay, so again, this is like um, my side view. If your view doesn't come up like this then you need to change, you know, whatever it might be. Like this is my front. Um, if I needed to rotate this thing, which honestly I do want to start with that view. If I wanted to rotate this thing though, I could turn it like that direction by again, changing my view orientation up here. If I needed to rotate the thing, which I don't have to, but if I did, I could click that and I could hit enter and I could rotate how, how it appears in here as well. So I'm going to go back to zero and enter with the checkbox. Okay. So we need to project our views to the left. We're also gonna need one to the right. And again, we're gonna create a section view in the top here. So I'm just gonna center this. And for section views, we need to select right up here and the section line, okay? So it's, it's right up there, it says section view. All right, it says, okay, do you want a vertical line or a horizontal line? Right, so if I was gonna be sectioning, let's say like this piece here, then I would say it's a vertical line and I could produce a drawing like this. But I really wanna produce one that comes up. So when I create my section line, I'm gonna call a horizontal leader. And you just gotta make sure that you're selecting the center of your object here, okay? So just be really careful that you're selecting the center of that object and bring this to the top. And we're gonna click check. Okay. Now one last view that I still need to project is my isometric view. So I'll take care of that. And again, we have a lot of circles. We have a lot of circles here. So we need a lot of center points, center marks, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's start showing our hidden lines and our different views down here. Again, you won't have hidden lines in that view. And of course you don't have them in your isometric ever. Um, 
And again, when we dimension to circles, ideally we're dimensioning to the circle itself, not to the square part that the circle creates. Okay, and we're not also dimensioning to things that we can't see. So like in this case, this hidden line is produced by this here. Okay, and then this inside circle, you could either dimension that here or you could dimension it over here. It's the same circle, just different sides of the object. Um, okay, and I have not put in my center mark, so let's do that. I haven't put in my center line, so let's do that. Yeah, the center line down here is kind of split by the section line, so that's fine. Um, I think we're pretty good there. So the, the, the major dimensions for the size of this thing, for like the length of this thing, can be dropped in, you know, on your front view. Okay, we have the length from here to here. And then we have the overall length of this object, right? When I drop that down here, you know, it is awfully getting close to that section AA. So if I hit escape, I can like move this. Also, like, don't be afraid to move your views if things are getting crowded. Okay, so the interior dimension here, realistically, the thing that I'm trying to show is how deep that particular object goes. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to go to where that thing ends. And I really like, again, does that 125 fit in there? Yes. Does it fit in there? Great. Definitely not. So I'm going to slide that to the outside. And I honestly selected, I should have selected the corner here. So I'm going to move my handle. And that'll be pretty good right now my extension says starting here and going to there so again here i think i have just about everything dimensioned i have the overall length um i have the section down here i have the diameter of the inner circle i have the diameter of the outer circle i have the diameter of the biggest part and the diameter of like the um the cutout in the middle okay so in the end here, I've created all these sheets. Now again, time to turn in these sheets. Two different ways to do that. The easiest way, honestly, these days is right click down on your drawing and say export. You want it to be a PDF, change your name to be like C-clamp, hit the X, make sure you have color on and export the, the project. And that's gonna get dumped down into my downloads and then I can upload that to Google Classroom later on. There's my drawing right there. Okay, so that's how we go through, produce the drawings. Make sure that everything is within your border before you turn it in. Make sure all of your dimensions are clearly visible. Make sure that if they are getting a bit crowded that you move them to the outside. Um, you know, and just again, check your drawings. Drawings are the most important part of this process, right? Like the modeling process gets us this object, but like this object can't be made from a model. The object gets made from drawings. So if you're not putting all of your information and not laying out your drawing and not working to make your drawing as clear as possible, then you're missing like a whole portion of this um, process here, right? So if you guys have questions, let me know. But again, this is a very comprehensive look at um, creating drawings as we move forward.